I just want to um, introduce everybody. This is Lorraine Post. She's coming to us. We're actually going to be talking with the USDA Farm Service Agency team, and they're going to give themselves some introductions, and they want to talk about some of the great programs that they have available for you. Now, Lorraine, while you're doing this, I will monitor the chat box. If people have any questions, please feel free to type it into the chat box and I'll get them answered for you. And then after we'll do question and answer in person where you can unmute. But during the presentation, if you would kindly put your questions in the chat box and I will make sure they get read for you. Thank you for having us this morning. Um, I'm Lorraine Post. I'm the Chautauqua County um, Farm Service Agency County Director. I've been with the agency for about six years and in my position for a little over three years. Today, I have uh, my program technician, Pam, and she's been here for about two and a half years. Um, so we're a fairly young office, considering um, there's people that's been in the agency for many, over 30 years. So um, we're a little unique in our office where we are co-located with the Chautauqua County Soil and Water District the uh, Natural Resource and Conservation Service. And then also in our office is the Farm Loan Program um, Division. And not every office has a Farm Loan Program Division. Um, they, the girls that service our county also service the Cattaraugus County Office and the Erie County Office. And here is a list of some of the programs that they offer here for loans. Um, we're located in Jamestown on Fluvanna Avenue. And if you have any questions of these loans, right now um, it's by appointment only in our office. But if you have any questions, feel free to call us. The number is on every slide on the bottom there. And um, if you have any questions that you wanna ask after the presentation, just give us a call. So starting out, our office is operated by a local committee that is elected by other producers and landowners in the county. Um, this committee, or the county is separated into two districts or two regions, and each district has a representative that is voted in um, from each region. These members serve for three years and they're not to exceed nine years. So um, I encourage producers to participate in the election um, because you're the voice of the community and these members make the decision in our daily tasks here in the office and how our programs are run. Um, they operate with official guidelines that come from Washington DC when approving the programs. I have certain delegations from our county committee that I can do, but there is also things that um, that they, they, um, they approve or I leave for them to approve. Uh, this year, the election is for our first district in the county, which is from the town of Poland to Stockton, and then as far north as Arkwright. Um, I encourage you, if you have anybody to nominate in this area, to do so and contact us and we'll send you out a nomination form. This has to be completed by August 1st. and. Uh, after the nomination process, um, ballots are sent out for people to vote and that has to be done by December 7th. Um, and then the new member is determined after that. The member would take office on January 1st. And um, last year we had the election in the Great Belt. And um, if you didn't receive a ballot, then to let us know and you think that you're eligible to get one, please let us know because some of our records are a little older um, for that. Um, so that's just kind of a quick rundown on how our office is, is ran and how it is determined on our applications. And the other programs that we're gonna talk about is just a little snippet on some of the things that we offer here. And we thought that these programs would be um, Part, you know, would be best for you guys for the grape industry. Okay, so our first program that we're going to talk about is grape acreage reporting or acreage reporting in general. Uh, for you guys, it would be once a year that you would report your grapes 
um, to our office. And it's, we usually start around October and it goes through uh, January 15th. Um, basically, if you would like to be eligible for our programs, um, anything, um, and in, so basically, if you want to be, participate in the programs we're going to talk about, you would have to report your grades once a year. Uh, we basically ask for the um, grape variety, uh, how many trees you've planted in a, in a row uh, or in the, within the vineyard, the row width, uh, the spacing of the trees and the age of the trees. Uh, that way we can um, keep track of them and we have record of them going forward, uh, especially if you ever have to um, get assistance with us uh, with some of the other programs we offer. As I said before, uh, the due date is January 15th. And then if you do have crop insurance, um, it does count as uh, or is considered reported, but you still need to sign um, the form FSA 578, and that's just the great acreage or the acreage reporting form. Uh, that way, we have record of it in the office. A lot of people get confused. They say, I have insurance, I don't need to report to you, but actually um, you still need to sign that form. Uh, one of the programs that reporting your grapes makes you eligible for is our tree assistance program, uh, which is a cost sharing program and it helps uh, for replacement, replanting or rehabilitation of any eligible trees, bushes, or vines. So your actual, um, the actual vine for you guys would be what would be covered. Uh, so you have to experience a uh, mortality rate of 16% due to a natural disaster. So hail damage, uh, obviously we don't get too many forest fires around here, but uh, say a tornado came off or a water spout came off of Lake Erie and damaged your vines, um, frost events, which I don't know that that typically affects them, but um, more so the grapes than the vine, but um, extreme cold where, you know, the it just damages your vine or kills your vine. Uh, we obviously can help you replace that um, but through this program. Uh, the losses have to be visible and obvious. So it's best to let us know right away if you see any damage or feel that there could be damage to your vines. Uh, that way we can get it on record, get an application filed um, so that at least we have it recorded. Uh, we do send a loss adjuster out to um, do an appraisal of the vineyard so that we know or they, they give us an official record of your eligible acreage and what was damaged for the replacement program. Um, you have to have owned the trees or be leasing the land that the trees are, are the vineyard or lease the vineyard in order to be eligible. Um, and then once you receive the money, you have to replace or um, repair your vineyard within 12 months of receiving the funding. Uh, and then the dates for submission would be 60 days after um, an event has been publicated. So something that's very obvious, <laughs> um, like a tornado, obviously there's gonna be official documentation on that. Um, or 90 days in which the disaster event was um, occurred or that you notice damage to the vineyards. And that's um, 90 days, so you would have to have filed your application and given us all of your documentation required within that 90 days. Okay, just one note that I want to say is if you think that there is an event that you would qualify, it's best to contact us immediately and not wait the 90 or 60 days. Um, it's just easier to say, hey, we had an event, you know, I think um, my vines are actually dead and to give us a call and we can start the process immediately. So that's just one tip of information, even though it does say that you have, um, you know, that 60 days or 90 days, 
contact us immediately. It's easier to work immediate than it is 90 days out. May um, I ask a question right here? Yes. Just curious about extreme cold events, if they were to injure a vine, but you're not going to know until later on in the season if there's actually, and it might exceed that 90 days. If we still contact you within that first 90 days and then sort of watch it along the way, does that count or is it just yeah, right. not? Yeah. Yep, that counts. Yeah, because yeah. you wouldn't really know if there's any kind of injury or fat plant isn't going to grow that summer until, you know, uh, you know, till the, the spring happens. Okay, thank you. Yep. Um, so one program that has become very popular in our office is the farm storage facility loan. Um, this producers can get low interest financing to store, handle, or transport eligible commodities. This program has changed a lot in the past five years where they've added so many more options that you can finance where before it was just um, grain bins, and um, hay storage. Now they've offered um, anywhere from skid steers to gondolas to milk bulk tanks. So this program has, has really blossomed in the past five years and added so much to the program. Um, the eligibility for this, you have to be a, an active producer and be able to show repayment. The loan amount or the structure has to have the useful life, obviously, for the term of the loan. You have to acreage report with us. So when Pam is talking about the acreage reporting, if you continue to acreage report with us, um, that makes you eligible. We don't have to go back on three years of acreage reports. Um, so this, this would be something that that would tie into as well. You have to use the equipment or the storage for your own personal use and not commercially. So you're not using it and other people are using your equipment for their product, their farm production as well. If it is storage, like a refrigerator or something, you have to show the need for the storage. And we actually have a calculator here. So you don't have to you know, say, well, I have X amount. Um, there's, there's a certain form and a calculator that we would use to help you figure that out. Um, the application period is all year round, so it's not you have to have it in by a certain day. There's no deadlines, but my suggestion that is if you're thinking of a gondola, you're thinking of a stainless steel bin, um, to let us know immediately because sometimes these um, loans can take up to eight weeks for approval. It's not something that you just come in, submit, submit an application and your financial stuff um, it's something that takes some time and some paperwork and background checks on our end to approve the loan. There's a few different options that you have in the farm storage facility loan program. You can, um, we can loan up to $500,000 with a term for 12 years or the micro loan option is $50,000. The difference between them, the major difference is the 500,000 or anything over $50,000, your minimum required down payment is 15%, where anything under 50,000 is 5% down. Um, New York State uh, Committee, they just passed an amendment. So anything under 25,000, you don't have to have a financial background check. So it's, Literally, you come in, submit an application, we make sure all of your eligibility paperwork is correct and on file, um, and then we can proceed with the process. So it's the under 25,000 is, is the, the quickest way to do it, um, but it does save a lot of time if you, if you pick that option. Here, I know this is really small and it might be blurry on your end, but here are just some examples of equipment that, that we have right now that is on our fact sheet for you to, um, to loan on. There is a picture there of a tractor trailer. Um, we could loan on the tractor part, but we can't loan on the trailer part. So we kind of wanted to include that to just give you an idea of some of the, the things that you can get a loan on. Our rates change monthly. 
So the rates that you see here on the on the screen are what they were for the month of May. They'll change June 1st. These are fixed rates. So if you do get a loan, these this is what the rate will be for the rest of the loan period. Um, so these, like I said, these will change on June 1st. And when you close the loan, this is the loan rate that you will get, the loan um, percentage. Yeah. Lorraine? Yep. Um, so you mentioned that the, the terms or length of the loan is different depending on the size of the loan, like the 50,000 versus the 500. So right. for gondolas and bulk containers, the field gondolas, bulk containers on trailers, which I'm assuming is most of what you're doing for graves, Correct. what yeah. are the what are the lengths of those loans? So so that would fall into the seven year um, loan term. So anything under 100,000, you can get a max of seven years. Over 100,000, it's 10. Okay. So if you have any questions on the loans, please give me a call. This, like I said, you know, they've opened this program wide open to a lot of things. Um, so if you're not sure, just, you know, let me know and we'll figure it out. Okay, so um, I think a lot of you have been involved in this program, um, the Coronavirus Food Assistance Program, uh, also known as CFAP2. There, uh, there was the original Coronavirus Food Assistance Program, however, it did not incorporate anybody that had um, grapes or sales commodities. Uh, CFAP2 did. And it uh, originally started last fall um, and we did get to meet a lot of you through this program. So that was amazing and awesome. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a COVID-19 relief um, for uh, producers that are experiencing hardship due to the pandemic. Um, they did close it in December. However, they decided to reopen it. Uh, it began on April 5th. Uh, 2021, and it's, uh, they said at least for 60 days, but we haven't heard anything mm -mm. as far as them wanting to close it um, thus far. Uh, and it is open to any new producers or producers who originally signed up and need to make corrections. So it's not another payment for those that were already paid and approved. It's for new producers, or anybody who didn't sign up for it last year. The first time. Um, so anybody is eligible that has a risk in a crop, uh, for you guys, it would be considered the sales commodity um, section. Uh, basically, it covers your grapes, or if you have other fruits or vegetables that you grow along with the grapes, um, it takes in your 2019 sales revenue, and then it pays based on the scale that you see on the left. So up to basically 50,000, you get a per, uh, payment factor of 10.6%. So just say 10% of that. Um, and then anything above that would be in the following scales. Um, and you can see in the example, a producer in 2019 uh, had a total of $75,000 in sales. The payment is calculated as the first 50,000 at 10.6 plus then the additional, so 25,000 at 9.9. .9. So your total payment would be uh, $7,775. Um, and then we, it is self certification. So you can just tell us what your uh, 2019 revenue is. We were asking for um, some supporting documentation more for your benefit because uh, they, the, um, but or the, they can spot check you, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Mm -hmm. So um, even though it is self-certification, we are trying to encourage anybody that signs up to um, provide some supporting documentation. That way, if that you ever were to be stop, spot checked, we already have that in your file. Um, so you don't have to then produce it if, if they come and ask you for it later. Um, and then, of course, any questions, you can contact us uh, 8 to 4.30, Monday through Friday. <laughs> um, and the phone number is listed there, and as Lorraine said, on each slide. Um, so we hope we can help you with anything that you may need.
<laughs> just a reminder too is that um, our office is still locked. So if um, you want to come to the office, just give us a call and we can set up an appointment. We're only allowed to have one person in here at a time. So um, we can make an appointment with you and be happy to discuss any of these things. Thank you so much for your presentation. If you want to stop sharing, we can entertain questions. Does anybody have any questions that they would like to ask at this time? Please feel free to unmute and ask your questions. Great. Yeah, I would just encourage growers. Um, I've been encouraging growers uh, to, to you know yep. participate in CFAP two, and hopefully everybody did that. Um, I know you know programs like tree fruit assistance during a disaster are occasionally frustrating if you've had a disaster but you don't qualify for the program. It's just important, I think, to remember that all programs are different, and CFAP two is. Um, is not like that. It's something that everybody would qualify for regardless. Like that example is so easy to calculate because that example applies to everybody. Um, a tree fruit assistance, it works really well when it works. Um, it's not necessarily, you know, people in Washington, D.C. were not thinking about Concord growers, so it's not always a perfect fit, but we did have growers who were really successful with it. So, uh, you know, keep it in mind depending on the level of disaster. And then, um, you know, I think I would encourage you to check out last week's crop update if you're interested in the in the loan program as well, particularly the bulk handling, because it makes that upgrade to bulk from a cash perspective, cash flow perspective, essentially free. Um, you know, by the time you get the value of the the accelerated depreciation in February, um, your your cash flow cost of up, upgrading to bulk harvesting is, is going to be zero. Uh, toward the end of that seven years, it will cost you something, but you're talking about a few thousand dollars a year. Um, and, and, you know, in net cost. So it may cost you seven or eight thousand dollars a year in payments, and that's going to vary based on how much stuff you buy. But um, your actual net cost because of the the savings associated with switching to bulk is going to be very, very small. And it's not going to be until, you know, on a 10 year loan, it's not going to be until the seventh year that it actually costs you anything because that's when you're, you know, the, the benefit of the accelerated depreciation is going to run out. Um, but yeah, I would really encourage anybody who's thinking about bulk to do that because it really, it doesn't cost anything in the short term. So Yeah, thank you, Mark. Close, close. <laughs> Looks a lot like him. <laughs> Kevin. No problem. You know Mark better than me. He was on your board for a while, I think. So no relation. <laughs> Not at all. Not at all. <laughs> Does anybody have any questions? Please feel free to unmute yourself and ask. We'll wait just probably another minute or so to see if anybody unmutes. If anybody is that interested in, interested in acreage reporting, you can contact us at any time to let us know and we can make sure we have you on our list. Um, we try to send out reminders, uh, like I said, around October, November uh, timeframe to people who are interested in reporting. And once again, it's kind of the gateway to our program. So it is important, even though, you know, it may seem kind of <laughs> annoying that we bug you every year for it, but having it on file is important. 